In this video, let's take a look at how to add activities to our document page in our Composica course. To start, we'll go over to the Insert ribbon. Now, activities may include hotspots, multiple choice, drag and drop, fill in the blank, sort, matching, pop-ups, point clicks, and surveys. All of the activities are designed to go ahead and allow you to engage your viewer and actually reinforce course materials. We'll provide one example and then you can go ahead and play around with these on your own. So we'll go ahead and insert a multiple choice activity. Once we click it, it will insert the container onto the page where we can go ahead and move it. We can then go ahead and resize the container as needed to fill up our document page. Now here's a little bit of a hint for you. Each of the activities will have various child elements that are fully customizable that will make up the entire container for the activity. If you're not sure what child element you're working on at any time, simply go over to the Project pane, click on the Elements tab, and then you can go ahead and choose the container that you're working with for the activity, expand it, and then you'll see all of the different child elements that are available. You can select an element to work with right from here. For example, we'll click on the question element and we'll go ahead and modify it right now. So we'll say, let's go ahead and change it to this video focused on dot dot dot. And then maybe the next thing we want to do is then work with the different answers. If, for example, there's any time when you have too many answers, you can simply select that particular child element and you can remove it. I'm going to press the delete key to remove it. Then I'm going to go ahead and then modify the answers here. So maybe this first one says it's all about the customer. The second one may be support is a hard job. And then maybe on this one I want to put engaging the customer. Now let's say that I do need to have an additional answer added to the list here. I can easily right click, modify, and then add an answer right there. And then I can go ahead and select it, maybe move it up the list there. And then we'll go ahead and say all of the above and so on. Now my next step might be to go ahead and choose which of these would be the correct response. So for example, I'll choose this one. I'll come over to my Properties pane in the Settings tab and then set this as one of those being the correct response. And then maybe I'll go ahead and choose another one as well. So we'll go ahead and do that here. Another thing we could also go ahead and do is choose to have, if I hold down my Shift key here, I can choose all of these at the same time and then swap over to the Text tab and maybe go ahead and set these to be bold and so on so I can modify the text if needed. I'm actually going to take off the bold. I just wanted to show you that there's different ways you can also modify the attributes of the text and so on. Now at this point we are ready to go ahead and have this be a fully functional multiple choice question. However I want to show you a few more things that you can do to modify this to make this a bit more interesting. Starting with the entire container selected over in the settings tab you have the ability to shuffle the answers so that they randomly display in a different order each time this particular document page is viewed. We can set to have an immediate check. We can also limit the answers that are allowed to be selected if you have multiple choice questions and so on. We'll go ahead and just keep the first one modified there. Now the next thing you may want to do is work with the child element that contains the feedback. In the feedback by default you have feedback for correct response to the right feedback for the wrong or incorrect feedback and also for partial feedback. And I'm going to actually come over here and resize this container. And you'll notice we also have a try again link as well as show correction. I'm going to go ahead and modify some of these elements and then again you can play around with this on your own and you can add such things as rich text. You can have uh, media elements within the feedback containers. You can have 
other navigational links and so on. It's up to you however you want to do it. I'll show you some of the basics. For example, maybe I want to go ahead and have some partial feedback that will only be shown on the first attempt. Now with the partial feedback, I'm actually going to go ahead and modify and add some custom feedback below it. The custom feedback in this case can be anything you want. I'm going to actually go ahead and have it say nice try, but that's not all there is to it. Now for the custom feedback element, I actually want to go ahead and have this only display at certain times under certain conditions. So with that particular child container, child element selected, I'm going to choose the behavior on a condition that this will display only when certain answers are not checked. For example, it's all about the customer is one of the correct responses when that's not checked or when engaging the customer is not checked. Let's click OK. I've set the conditions. What will happen is it will show partial feedback with this additional custom feedback. Okay, and we'll go ahead and show you how this plays out when we go ahead and act as the viewer on this document page. There's another thing I want to show you here. Perhaps there's times when you want to provide some hints to your particular viewer. That also is easily done. I'm going to go ahead and select the multiple choice container again. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go ahead and say modify and I'm going to add a hint. It will pop in a hint button over here and I can set the behavior for it. It can be on click or when the viewer mouse is over it. I can determine if I want to decrease the score at any point because they're using the hint. How many times do I want to show it? Maybe I just want to show it once or I can have it shown as many times when they click and I can determine when I want them to be able to view it and then I also can set a delay for when it's going to be available so for example here maybe I'll say five seconds and so on now the other thing I want to do is go ahead and double click in here again this particular container is just simply a text frame or text box it can be customized to however you want it to appear. So here we're just going to go ahead and pop in some text that I already have um, copied from another document that I'm pasting here. So I did a control V and I'm pasting it in and then I'm going to click off of it. Now our particular activity, our multiple choice activity is complete at this point. We could add more modifications to it but I just wanted to show you the basics. So we'll go ahead and save this and let's see how this plays back in a browser. Here it is in the browser now. For example, let's see how the custom feedback for partial answers might work. So I'll go ahead and we'll say engaging the customer, check answer, and you'll notice here's our partial feedback with additional custom feedback response here. I want to go ahead and try again. And then this time I'm going to go ahead and select the two proper responses and we'll check the answer and you'll notice that it is correct. So let's go ahead and close out of this particular browser here and come back to our document page. To summarize, this video showed you the basics of adding activities to a document page to engage your viewer and also to retain their attention as well as to reinforce course content. 